Hi everyone, my name is John Lockley and I'd like to welcome you to my fourth day of shamanism and meditation practice challenge. It's taking place over 11 days and the focus of this challenge is to create some light and some hope for people who have lost their lives from the COVID pandemic and all those people who have suffered because of this pandemic. So it's a way for us to come together as a human circle, as an Ubuntu circle, to send some prayers of hope and love and positivity to other people who are suffering right now. And the way that we are doing that is by practicing on ourselves first, feeling our own pain and our own struggles and making peace with that and then directing our shining hearts to those people who are suffering right now. So that's the focus of this challenge and that's why I'm calling it a challenge because it's 11 days, 11 days of holding that focus, holding it focus where we are practicing not just for ourselves but we are practicing for other people practicing for someone who's not well, practicing where you are able to focus on your spirit, on your soul and on connecting to our ancestors. When other people maybe because they are suffering so much, they are so overwhelmed with their own trauma and with the difficulties that they're in right now, that they are unable to actually meditate. So. In Buddhism, we say that there is some good karma and luck and auspicious birth by being able to meditate and to have the time to meditate. So just to even have the time to sit with me over these 11 days is auspicious and it's lucky because most of us have so much pressure placed on us in our own time. So just to sit together where we're focusing on meditation where we're focusing on the earth and where we're focusing on creating a good energy where we can direct it to others this is a positive thing this is a lucky thing okay so for all those people who have been with me from the beginning i'd like to say thank you thank you for joining me and um and let's see if we can if we can stick together for the next you know until the end so it's 11 days so that's why it's a challenge <laughs> and I must say I'm really enjoying this process I'm enjoying being with all of you and I'm enjoying the challenge of coming into this moment no matter what no matter whether we've had a good night's sleep or not whether we're feeling good or not but we just come together and we just sit together and, and then I can see you with your smiley faces and your hearts. Thank you very much. Keep up with the hearts. Keep it up. Thank you. So I know that you are there. Um, the difficulty sometimes with, with this way of teaching is I can't see your faces. And, uh, and that is hard when you're teaching just to a screen. But when I can see a, a little bit of emoji, a little bit of heart, some nice smiley faces, um, it does help me. So thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it. So, just on that note, if there are particular areas of practice um, which I can cover in a few minutes, then feel free to email me and I'll cover it in these next few days. Um, so just email me at john, Lockley, john at johnlockley.com or info at johnlockley.com. And this is not a, a workshop. This is a practice session, practice and devotion. So if, if there's anything to do with the practice and this devotional um, way that um, we're working on over these 11 days, then please feel free to email me, okay? And if there's particular themes that you'd like to cover to do with practice and prayer, then please feel free to email me, okay? Or you can even write it in the, in the block there. In, in the Facebook um, messenger there and I will read it later okay so hi hi Sarah from England and hi to 
to Joe from Ireland. Hi, Joe. And Krista from Maui or from Hawaii, Krista and Jez and all of you lovely people that I've had the pleasure of meeting, some of you. Um, it's so nice to see you. Carly, hi Carly. <laughs> Eileen from the Netherlands, hi Eileen. So thanks all of you for joining from around the world. It's really exciting to see all these, all these faces and all these messages, so thank you. Yes, so I'm passionate about this practice. I'm passionate about the practice of prayer, about the practice of connecting to the umoya, to the spirit inside of us. I'm, pra I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about it because I know the effect of powerful prayer. And let me just speak a little bit about that, the effect of powerful prayer. I witnessed this firsthand in the townships of South Africa. And the townships are, for those people who don't know, are those areas during apartheid um, era where only black people were allowed to live. And um, it was very brutal. It was one of the worst forms of social engineering in the world. And fortunately it ended when Nelson Mandela came to power in 1994. However, it's still an area where um, people who are struggling financially live in the townships. And it's an area where it's mostly black African people, although there are now white people living there as well. So it's not segregated racially anymore, thank God. However, what I learned when I went into the townships, I learned about the power of prayer, and that's what I'm teaching. It doesn't matter what color your skin is, what culture you are, each person has the power of connecting to their energy, to their electricity going through their bodies. And the way we harness that, the way we harness that is by connecting what I like to call connecting with the inner drummer, with the drummer inside of you. So when we had our traditional ceremonies in South Africa, our Sangwama ceremonies, we would have maybe one and sometimes two drums. And they would be like this engine pulsating and bringing everyone together. And it was incredible, absolutely incredible. Over time, you'd feel your own heartbeat actually beating in time with the drum and then we'd be dancing in time with the drum and all of us would be in sync. And how we would know that we were all in sync, we, we would dream, dream about one another. So it was before the cell phone came in, um, we would dream about each other and that's how we'd get the news from the spirit world because we would be given information about how to help one another. And how did we do that? All we did was just let go and surrender into the beauty of the drum beat. And the drum beat is a manifestation of the heartbeat. So when we all come together in a circle, and it doesn't matter if we can't see each other, but we can connect even with a few messages online like this. But when we all connect in this way, we all come together connected with our hearts. The only thing we have to do, and the challenge right now, um, being in cyberspace and being online, the challenge is concentration, where you turn your external devices off and where you're focusing on what we are doing right now. And that is the challenge. And it's a challenge for all of us. It's a challenge for me as well. Um, where we focus on the practice of being together and of our hearts. So, how do we connect with one another with our hearts? How do we do that? And I mentioned yesterday, today I was going to talk about Ubuntu and the human circle, strengthening the human circle. So Ubuntu is a Southern African word and it means humanity. It says Umtu Gabantu Umtu, which means a person becomes a person through other people. Umtu, Ngumtu, Ngabantu. So a person becomes a person through other people. So through listening to another person's problems and sadness and feeling it in your heart, you become more empathic. Through helping another person through trials and tribulations in their life, you become a better person. You become more empathic and you become a human being. So we say in traditional circles in Southern Africa and around Africa, 
We are born human, with two hands, eyes, looking like this. But we have to make a decision to become a human being. We are born human, yes, but it's a road to become human. To become human means to become empathic. It means to turn on the engine of our intuition, of instinct, perception, passion, empathy. To turn all these faculties on, we have to make a decision with our consciousness to connect with our humanity. And as we do that, as we do that, we connect with the circle of humanity. And then we also connect with the plant and animal worlds. So I'm going to talk a bit more about this, but I think first let's do a bit of a guided meditation like I do and open up the altar. So wherever you are, feel your heartbeat. I play my Tibetan bowl. Let's center in together right now. Breathing in, feeling your heart beat. Feel your heart beat. And one more time. Put your fingers together like this, resting on your lap. Take a nice deep breath in. And just hold your breath for a count of four heartbeats. So breathing in. Breathe out. And breathing in. One more time. Breathing in. Focusing the altar, so lighting a stick of incense, dedicating the practice today to all those people who have lost their lives to the COVID pandemic and all those family, friends and carers who have suffered from their loss. And also all those people who have suffered in other ways from the COVID pandemic. You know, there's been a lot of suicide. Um, there's been a lot of other problems that have come up and people trying to get cancer care and struggling with that and getting very, very sick. There's a lot of other, there's a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of other problems that have happened. Uh, joblessness, a lack of money, a lack of food, a lack of shelter, all come about because of the COVID pandemic. So I just want to take a moment just to pause and dedicate the, the first stick of incense for the day to all those people who have suffered and also lost their lives to the COVID pandemic. So we send you some love and we send you our attention, our witness, our witnessing and that we remember you. The most powerful thing we can do as human beings is to give each other attention and to remember, to remember one another. So we remember those people who have passed on and we send you love and we send you blessings from today's practice and all the other practices that we do over these 11 days. Hey, wouldn't let him young gay, wouldn't let him young gay. 
ancestors and all my teachers in this world and the next and I'm talk, calling on all our ancestors and I'm saying help us to connect with our humanity to move forward as a human race I'm saying to the great one Kamata, the great spirit Siobonga we give thanks we give thanks for this moment and we pray that we can all move forward in a good way together one human race, one blood, and and then help this world from suffering. So just hold this prayer for a moment, all of you. So whatever prayer you have in your heart, you can direct it to this candle or a candle in your own room. And just take a moment to pause. We are so busy, it's hard for all of us to pause nowadays. But just take a moment now. Give yourself the luxury of just pausing and sending a prayer. Now back to the practice of passion and devotion, okay, and connecting with it, a mindless spirit, that power spirit that we are so that we are so good at in South Africa, and um, so for those people who are struggling inside to pray, the most important thing is to feel your own energy. It doesn't matter how well or sick you are, if your heart is beating, feel that electricity around you. That electricity is what's connecting you to life and it's connecting you to that magical quality of, of just being alive, you know. So I always recommend for people just to feel that life force inside of you and the easiest, the easiest way is to feel the little drummer, feel your heartbeat and just breathe into that. So we'll do that for a few moments. Breathe out. So you're making contact with your own spirit rather than the noise around you. And breathing out. <clears throat> so holding your fists like this. And then breathing in. And I want you to breathe out. And I want you to feel your fists. And this is not about anger. This is about energy. This is about vuma, we say. As you can clench your wrists, you don't have to clench them hard. Take a breath in and breathe out. And over time, over the next few moments, you should be able to feel your heart beat in your hands. You should. I can right now. Both hands, I feel my heart beat. So what does that mean? It means in both hands, I'm feeling the drum beat. I'm literally feeling the drum beat in my hands because I'm clenching my hands and I'm feeling my heart beat right here. If you can't, then concentrate a bit more, bring a bit more energy into your body. So you bring your hands like this, breathe in. <clears throat> like this. <clears throat> Just like that. Just like that. Very simple. Be passionate. And then again, breathing in. Breathe up. <clears throat> okay. I can't see you, can't feel you, so send some hearts so I know you're there. I know there's 38 people on the live thing, but I can't see you and I can't feel you, so send a heart so I know that you're hearing what I'm saying. 
Okay, got a couple of hearts. Thank you. Okay, so one more time. What I'm saying is you want to feel your heartbeat in your hands. You want to ignite the passion of the kundalini and what we call umbilini energy, which is going through your spine. You want to ignite the alchemy going through your spine, and that's how you direct your spiritual practice. You need to feel the life force. So breathing in, clenching your hands, not out of anger, but to feel the energy, clenching your hands, breathing in, and then breathing out. And now we do it one more time. This time you're gonna open the mouth and release the tongue. And again, that's to release, we say, Ngonyama, which means the spirit of the lion, to connect to your own spirit. There's a reason for this. Here we go. Okay, one more time, breathing in. And you're releasing the toxins from your tongue, anything that's getting in the way of you connecting with your heartbeat, you're releasing through your tongue. So one more time, we're doing this together. Breathing in, breathing out. Keep your tongue out, releasing any toxins. Feeling your hands, feeling your heartbeat. Can you feel your heartbeat in your hands? So reply to me now, all of you, every single one of 40 people, I want to hear you right now. Can you feel your heartbeat in your hands right now? If you can't, be more passionate, concentrate, ignite the spirit in your spine. Because we need you. It's the other thing with Ubuntu Circle, each person participates with the circle. Each person is responsible for the human race. Isn't that a big thing, eh? Each person is responsible for the human race. Each person is responsible about whether they wake up or not. So right now we're waking up. Can you feel the heartbeat in your hands? Be passionate. Take it seriously. Good. Because this here is your amanless spirit. This is your potential to help this world or not. Very important. Very, very important. Very, very important. How do you connect with it? Just like I'm showing you. Amanla. Shaking up and down. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Feeling the power in your hands. Clenched, but not too much. Feel the pulse. Yeah, it's happening. It's happening. Can I see some hearts from you so I know you're hearing and feeling me? Don't be shy. I want to feel your heart. Thank you. Now I'm going to get some drumming going. And after the drumming, I'm going to spend about five minutes talking about the Ubuntu Circle and what we are creating right now and why it's important to share this message. Why is it important to share this message? And the more people who hear this and can connect with this, the more harmony we can spread in this world. Okay, so here we go for the drumming. Hold on to your seat. Feel the pulse in your hands. And if for some reason the, the connection with the internet is not good for where you are and there's a bit of a delay or latency, then please just listen to the drumming on my YouTube video later because it will be a clear recording. And um, it's on my YouTube channel, which you should all have a link to, but if you don't, I'll put a link on this event afterwards. And again, please feel free to subscribe so I get more, um, more energy into the channel. So here we go. Sit up straight, feel your heartbeat, feel your Amandla spirit. Amandla. Amandla. Gawetu. So that's what we say. We say Amandla, I go Amandla, and you go Gawetu. Gawetu means to us. Amandla. And you go 
Gawetu. Amandla. You go. Gawetu. Okay. <laughs> if you're with me live, then I'd be, uh, I'd be getting you all stirred up like this. the good energy to the altar to those who have lost their lives to those people who are afraid when they're close to death to those loved ones who are afraid because their beloved was suffering and dying we call on the great spirit and all our ancestors to help those people who are suffering to move into the other world with ease over the river 
we practice not in a selfish way for us right now. We practice for others. And in so doing, we realize the Ubuntu circle. We realize our humanity. So a few words about the Ubuntu circle. Each person is responsible for the human race. And mystics would talk about this. The yogis would talk about this. Some gurus talk about this. Why is that? Because as each person connects with their heart, they can, they can bring more harmony into the collective. Because we as human beings are like this massive beehive. And if you look at the work of Carl Jung, he's a well-known psychologist, he talks about the collective unconscious. And there's many, many stories between psychology and medicine and mysticism and spirituality to confirm this, that we are in this incredible collective where all our minds are connected. So saying that, our anger and hatred feeds the collective. Our decision about spreading harmony and feeling our own shadows and doing our best to spread harmony feeds the collective. So saying that, the greatest thing each person has is the power of choice. We can help this world or not. And it's no good if we think that presidents and politicians and leaders are the only ones responsible. That's a cop-out. To connect with this Amandla spirit means to connect with your own power, feeling your own power, knowing that anything is possible, and that is scary. That is a scary thought. Okay. <laughs> so the first thing we do with this Ubuntu circle, creating this human circle, the first thing we do is we feel the drama inside of us. We feel our electricity. We feel the heartbeat. And then we feel the next step of what to do. And the next step is that we see ourselves as channels of energy. And then we direct that energy upwards and we pray and give thanks to the Great Spirit and our ancestors for this human birth. And then we listen to the guidance that comes from that through our dreams and through tracking our life, what's happening in our life. And then we hold on to our friends' hands next to us in our community. And as we do that, we create a human circle. And then as there's harmony in the human circle, then we're facing outwards to the world of nature. And then the next job is for us to be custodians of this world, to help the plants and animal worlds. Because that is the default of a human being. The default of a human being is a compassionate, empathic person who is responsible for the environment. And as we connect with our humanity, then we connect with our calling, our spiritual calling. And each person's calling is a bit different. I'll speak about spiritual calling in another day. Um, but for now, that Ubuntu circle, we have created it together. Thank you for those hearts. Thank you so much. And um, I'm going to finish off with that point of each of us is responsible for the circle. But it's not a heavy thing, guys. You know, we need a bit of a sense of humor. Okay. It's not a heavy thing. It's just to feel your own intentions and know, please know, that you have power. You have a mandla. And a mandla is in your spine. It's in electricity around you. And I saw that a mandla spirit when I was 18 years old as an army medic in the South African military. And my patients, some of them had no legs. They were in landmine. Um, accidents were landmines from the war in Angola and I remember one of my favorite patients he had no legs he was 22 years old can you imagine but you could feel the electricity in his spine and when we got his first prosthetic legs for him there were these incredible prosthetic legs made by the military titanium whatever you want just incredible legs we gave him the legs that had been fitted for him, and I remember asking him if I could help him walk down the corridor. And he looked at me and he said, no. 
And it was like this, it was like the long walk to freedom that Nelson Mandela speaks about, except in, with this man's case, with Alfonso's case, he had no legs, these were his new legs. And everyone was watching, the whole ward was watching, even the, the colonels and the, um, the um, orthopedic surgeons, but not watching him to embarrass him, but they were just behind, just seeing if he was okay. And then we fitted the legs to him, and then we, he put his trousers over, and he stood with dignity, and he just held the, the, the side. There was like a little bar, he was holding that, and I was standing by his side, but he didn't want me to hold him. And I watched him walk with this incredible electricity going through his spine, even though he had no legs. And in that moment, I wanted to learn about African traditional mysticism, because how this man, how this man lived, and how he walked with all the trauma and suffering he had gone through, I thought, I need to learn this. So that was my intention at the age of 18. And this is what I'm teaching you. That's called the Manla. And he, Alfonso had no legs, my friends. He had no legs, but he had the spirit in his spine. And that spirit was, I'm not going to give up. And he had this incredible dignity. So each of us have that as well. And we just need to turn that on inside of us. So let me finish with on that note. And um, so this is the end of day three. And thanks again for all of you signing in. It's so wonderful to see all your hearts and your beautiful comments. It's really feeding my own hearts and giving me energy to carry on. And I thank you so much for that. And if you like my work and you like what I'm doing, it does help me if you sign up for my newsletter. If you just like my page on Facebook and my YouTube channel, and also my Instagram channel. And if you feel called to make a donation for this work that I'm doing, then please feel free to do that. We'll put the, the links in this event shortly. And from my heart to yours, I give thank you. I give thanks. So let me just wrap up the altar. And so we just take a moment. Chewe, ndau, siabonga, ndau koko kusile, ndau we, chewe, ndau, siabonga, topela morena, ndau ndau tama koko siam. Thank you, and I'll see you tomorrow, day four. And I think tomorrow I can speak a bit about spiritual practice. Okay, so I'll speak about how we can connect more with our practice. So thank you everyone.